Hey guys, it's KJ from the Scariest Movie Ever channel on YouTube. I have a video here that I wanted to make for you because it falls right in line with a subject that I've been covering here on the channel for many years now. And it has to do with the awakening. There's an awakening happening on both sides of the equation for the sheep and the goats, if you will. The wheat and the tares. Oftentimes here on the channel we're talking about a spiritual awakening that's taking place. We hear the term all the time, wake up, right? Wake up, wake up. You hear that all the time now. Because many people are waking up. Massive amounts of people across the planet are waking up. Whether they realize it or not. And we're all on different levels of this understanding, but what is it that we're actually waking up to? All of the old constructs are falling away. Sociologically speaking, politically speaking, even religiously speaking, all of these old constructs are falling away. Everything is being prepared for the fifth age, or the last age of man. This is also going to be the Luciferian age, or the New World Order completed. Now it's only going to be here for a few years, but during those few years, the planet will see more destruction, death, and blood than it's ever seen before since its very existence. So people are waking up to the truth of the times we're in. This goes beyond religion. This is about a very simple truth that God is real, the devil is real, and this is the devil's domain, planet Earth. This entire beast system is being exposed now for what it is and what it has been for a very long time. You could say that, on one hand, God's children are all waking up. God's children are beginning to see the truth of this world, the truth of the times we're in. But what I want to focus on in this video is how the enemy's children are awakening. The enemy's armies are rising. I want to show you some examples of some very real spiritual warfare that's taking place right now. What you're looking at is one of the movie posters from a new film that recently came out called The Witch. So I just had a chance to actually see this movie The Witch. Now some of you that have followed me for a long time, especially some of my chat shows, you know that I have a history with... you know that I have a history in filmmaking. I'm a film student. I worked in New York City, worked in Los Angeles for a while. All the time I was pursuing a career in horror, in scary films. That's what I was trying to write, and that's what I was wanting to direct. And throughout the years I've seen practically every horror film you can imagine. There's a handful of them that I can't even watch again. They were that disturbing. And I have to tell you, it's been years since I've seen a movie that really affected me that way until I saw The Witch. The Witch is truly one of the most disturbing films I have ever seen in my life. For many reasons. First and foremost, it's actually a scary movie. At least to me it was. But there was a lot of truth in this movie The Witch. A lot of dark truth. And that's what really disturbed me. Because you see, the movie The Witch, it's not just a movie, and I'm going to get into some of this here and show you what I'm talking about. This film really is a call to arms. Now this right here is from the Satanic Temple. You can see right here they have the witch and the Satanic Temple. The Satanic Revolution, it's time to awaken. Now some of you may see this and just kind of laugh it off and think, ah, whatever, it's just some people trying to get attention or something like that. But I'm telling you, no, you're not correct. This goes much deeper than that. Because you see, people like myself have been around for years trying to expose the evil in the world that I see manifesting more and more. There's a lot of us out here doing this. But we can't forget that on the other side, but we can't forget that there's people on the other side as well. They're promoting what's coming. They want this to come. They want this Luciferian age. They want this Antichrist to appear. They want this beast system. So I actually read this letter from Jex Blackmore, who apparently is one of the national spokespersons for the Satanic Temple. 
She says, I speak to you as a Satanist, an individual who embraces her pariah status and actively challenges arbitrary authority in defense of personal sovereignty. To the Satanic Temple, Satan is a symbol of defiance, independence, wisdom, and self-empowerment, and serves as an affirmation of natural existence. As Satanists, we are ever mindful of the plight of women and outsiders throughout history who suffered under the hammer of theocracy and yet fought to empower themselves. This film provides content this film provides context to a period of American history that is too often fetishized by those seeking to wield this hammer once again. This film refuses to construct a victim narrative. Instead, it features a declaration of feminine independence that both provokes puritanical America and inspires a tradition of spiritual transgression. We are empowered by the narrative of the witch, a story of pathological pride, old world religious paradigms and an outsider who grabs persecution by the horns. Efforts to oppress and demonize the heretic prove to be a path to destruction. The witch does not burn but rises up in the night. The witch is not only a powerful cinematic experience but also an impressive presentation of satanic insight that will inform contemporary discussion of religious experience. Yet the witch is more than a film, it is a transformative satanic experience. That in all its call to arms, they said it right there, that in all its call to arms becomes an act of spiritual sabotage and liberation from the oppressive traditions of our forefathers. Her last paragraph says this, first sentence is emboldened, and it says, it is time to awaken. And then she says, as we stand at the crossroads of history, let us confront the blind and self-righteous who persecute thought and reason. Let us rise up in celebration of our satanic nature and embrace the embodiment of the witch. This is a new American era. Join us. As I told you, this is a call to arms. There is a dividing that's taking place right now. It's been happening for years now, and it's getting much more intense. We are literally seeing the division. We are literally seeing the parting of the sheep and the goats, the wheat and the tares. And the enemy's army is growing. It's rising. I also wanted to show you this. I found it very interesting. This right here is the story, of course, the Satanic Temple to support and tour the witch. We know this now, right? But as I scroll down to the comments section on this particular story, I found something very interesting. And once again, this is from a horror website that I found this. And here it is. Now keep in mind, this is in a comment section on a horror movie website, but the information in here is very important. This is stuff that, again, we've been talking about for a very long time. Now what you're looking at right here is a conversation between two people. One of them is still dead asleep, okay? That's the guy on the top. And the other person is fully awake to the truth of this satanic system. So the guy on top says, Satanism is still a thing? I thought it went out when the 80s ended. Now again, that is a classic example of the typical Joe or Joanna public. You know, just kind of walking around clueless. I have no idea about this stuff, but there he is. Frank Lloyd Jr., whoever that is. Satanism is still a thing? I thought it went out when the 80s ended. Now he's about to get some hard truth dropped on him right here by somebody calling themselves Gadriel. Gadriel says, The so-called Satanism of LeVay isn't the real thing. It's a parlor game version. Smoke and mirrors. The real Satanists are the hidden hand that control everything, who trace their lineage back to Babylon and Sumer. Satanism is real and is practiced by doctors, lawyers, bankers, politicians, and others in elite circles. LeVay Satanism is not. It's just a bunch of goth kids who want to be edgy and who would run a mile if they ever met real Satanists. This last sentence nails it. Saturn worshippers realize who the real lord of this world is. Now again, I don't know Gadriel, I don't know these people, but I know the information is correct, because I myself have been researching the same thing for years. Now before you start saying that all oh, these Satanists are, you know, it's just a bunch of goofy kids, and you're just trying to get attention or whatever, you need to step back a little bit and actually see some of the news stories coming out. These people are very, very effective. Again, I told you, this is spiritual warfare, and these people are battling right now. I'm going to show you some examples. I mean, here's one right here, the Satanists to give prayer at Phoenix City Council meeting. You can see right here the Phoenix City Council voted to abolish a 65-year practice of opening meetings with religious prayer. The whole reason they did that is they were threatened with being sued by the Satanic Temple. 
The city council decided that it preferred no prayer at all from now on, and completely changing their history, right? Taking prayer or taking God out of the equation. So they preferred no prayer at all than to actually allow a satanic invocation. And this is how they're winning. I personally think that this story had more to do with them getting rid of God and getting rid of prayer than them actually getting in there and doing their own prayer, though I'm sure they probably would have. Let me show you another example. So now you may remember this story. This is from Oklahoma City, and it was the same thing. The same tactics were being used. A satanic temple was building the statue of Baphomet with two children next to it, and they wanted to place it right next to the Ten Commandments at the state capitol in Oklahoma City. So what does Oklahoma City do? They take down the Ten Commandments. It's the same thing that happened in Phoenix. So now you're starting to see a pattern, right? And they finally unveiled their statue. I know a lot of you have seen this footage. A lot of you have seen the statue out there. You can see all the people lined up out there to check it out. And again, I know it's easy to see these pictures and think, oh, they're just a bunch of goofy goth kids. You know, they're looking for attention, whatever. Nothing to worry about here. And that's where you're wrong. I just showed you these people are very effective at what they're doing. These people are engaged in real battle. This darkness is rising, and it has been for years. Again, I've been showing you this for a long time myself, and there's other people out there doing this as well. These are the times we're in. Everything is being exposed. And as we do, you'll see more stories like this. Air Force Academy adapts to pagans, druids, witches, and wiccans. U.S. Air Force paid to have cadets learn witchcraft. We have stories like this. A you know, five-year-old boy snatched from nursery and beheaded in sadistic witchcraft ritual. Wiccan ritual killing leaves family of three dead in Pensacola. Witchcraft and nail clippings, the weird world of Sherry Blair. That's the wife of Tony Blair. And this is all about how she performs witchcraft. And she's not the only one. I just wanted to share this one because once again it's a window into the world of the elite, if you will. Florida gunman who killed six called 911 hours earlier about someone performing witchcraft on him. And I thought this was interesting as well. It was this interview I'd seen with Cher, the singer and actress Cher. So Cher speaks her mind. But at one point down here, they're asking her how she's maintained that youthful look. The lady's around 80 years old now. And of course, her reply is witchcraft. Now, some people may think that's a joke. Haha, <laughs> she was just kidding around. But of course, it instantly reminded me of this story that came out, went public, this is a while back, about Kim Kardashian's blood facials. Now, I'm not going to get into all the Kardashian stuff right here. Plenty of people have shown you that. But there's no denying this family is deep into the occult with all the symbolism they use. And that brings me back to the witch. I want to talk a little bit about the movie, and I'm going to show you a few more things right after. I want to give you a fair warning right now. There's going to be some spoilers here uh, in case you're actually wanting to watch this movie. I have a big audience. Some people are going to be mad that I said that, Okay, Jay, you're telling people to watch the Devil's Movie. Folks, relax. There's a lot of different people out here watching these videos, and they don't see things the way you do. So if you actually want to see this movie, I'm going to go easy on the spoilers, but I really have to lay some stuff out, specifically a few things about the ending. Because again, this isn't just a movie. This is a call to arms. This is why the Satanists are embracing this film. Now, throughout the years, myself and others have shown you that the V in popular culture oftentimes means the Five or the Fifth Age. Now, obviously, when we find this symbol, we need confirmations. And I have a lot of examples on my channel. There's a lot of other people out there that have been showing this for a long time. But the V is the Five, is the Fifth Age. The Fifth Age is the Age of Aquarius. It's the Age of the New World Order. It's the Age of the Antichrist. And this is what they're all waiting for. So on one side, you have people waiting on Christ's return. And on the other side, you have people waiting on this final age. Everything that we've been exposing for years is in this movie. All of it deals with the devil, literally signing your name in the book, making a deal with the devil, sacrificing children, drinking the blood of children for a youthful appearance. There's a lot of underlying messages in this movie, too, that are incredibly disturbing. And one of the most disturbing messages to me that I saw in this movie is that Christ can't help you. God won't take care of his own. The enemy has all the power. Now I'm going to get into a few things about the end of the film. The ending of the film, the message that it's putting forth, the moral of the story, is truly one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen in a film. 
And again, this is coming from a guy that has a background in film and seen tons of horror films and is raised with all this stuff. But this movie really affected me. Because the moral of the story at the end of this film, that if you make a deal with the devil, you can have anything you want. In fact, you can be like a god. And the message itself is as old as Adam and Eve. It literally has somebody making a deal with the devil. And at the very end, this person has godlike powers. And they're actually happy about it. They're elated. They made a deal with the devil, and at the very end, they're actually performing miracles. As if they were their own god. Now that, to me, is definitely the most disturbing thing I've seen in a film in a very, very long time. Once again, this goes beyond it just being a scary film, which it is. I found it to be a very scary movie. But it's the message. It really is a part of the satanic revolution. And they're not just sitting around in shadows performing little rituals in basements and whatnot. Now they've come to the surface. So just think about that. Here's a film that's embraced by the satanic temple and is being promoted by the satanic temple. And this movie is incredibly pro-satanism, so it should be no surprise that they're promoting it. It's really sick, man. Like I said, it's showing that they kill babies in this and they drink their blood and that gives them youth. They show that making a deal with the devil is actually a really good thing. I mean, you can have whatever you want, just make the deal with them and you're good to go. You could even be like a god. This is the message they embrace. This is what's being promoted. But we really don't have to look that far to see these ideas playing out in our culture. This has been happening for quite a while. But just think of all of these movies that we've been seeing coming out over the last few years that have to do with demonic babies, right? Or the birthing of a devil. Demonic children. And by extension, of course, we have all of these satanic TV shows. Angel from Hell, you've probably heard about that one. Of course, we have Damien. That's one of the new ones now. But Damien has a whole lot in common with the television show Lucifer. Look at this. We have two shows out here about the devil, right? About the devil on Earth. And both of these shows paint him in a very good light. I mean, Damien's not a bad guy, at least as far as the TV show goes. And Lucifer, I've seen an episode of that, and same thing. He's very charismatic, you know, he gets all the ladies, he has anything he wants, he's got a great life, you know. Here is another one of the tactics from these Satanists, from these groups, from Satan's army, if you will. But remember this, the Satanic Children's Big Book of Activities, right? And here's a picture right here from inside. It's some really sick stuff, as far as I'm concerned. Again, they're embracing this film that's all about killing children and drinking their blood. But they're making out these coloring books for kids, trying to give the impression, hey, we're all about the children, right? And right here you go, satanic books handed to U.S. school kids after religious freedom ruling. So you can see that was one of their tactics once again, even right here, Orange County School Board considering restricting all religious materials. Where have we seen this before? Phoenix, Oklahoma City, and now this. They're just getting started. And then, of course, in a less obvious way, we see this satanic idea permeating our society with stupid movies like Trainwreck. You know, it's all about hookups, right? It's all about the, the hookup culture. Remember friends with benefits or no strings attached? But this is our culture, right? This is our culture now. This is what we're seeing. This picture right here is a very clear example of that division between the sheep and the goats, or the wheat and the tares. We are also living in a self-obsessed culture. So speaking of the battle, speaking of the division, I want to talk about one of the enemy's greatest tricks. One of his greatest weapons. It's called sigil magic. You're looking at a sigil right here. Now sigil from Latin means seal. It's a symbol used in magic. And the term is usually referred to a type of pictorial signature of a demon or other entity. However, in modern usage, especially in the context of chaos magic, it refers to a symbolic representation of the magician's desired outcome. That is a perfect explanation for sigil magic, especially considering what we're looking at right here. I'm not going to go into all the breakdowns of these Economist covers from 2015 and 2016. I've done it before and lots of other people have done it too. And all these people are finding different pieces, and it's all really pretty amazing. But this is a classic example of sigil magic. There is an intention behind this. 
Here's another great example you might remember, and I'd actually covered this one as well. In fact, that picture in the middle with the person holding the pencil, that's from my video. During a Cubs game, they actually flashed this image at one point. So I did my video, other people did their videos on breaking down the symbols. And I promise you, every other comment on there, if I haven't already removed them in the past, is telling me that, well first telling me I'm a retard, but secondly telling me that this was just a tattoo sheet. It's the most common explanation. It's a tattoo sheet, dummy. I kept getting that over. And oh, it's a tattoo sheet. They didn't do a spell. Well, guess what? They did a spell. And they admitted it. Right here. And this right here is them actually telling you what they did and explaining it. In the late 80s, while with the Astros, we lost 11 straight at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. We had a better club, finished well ahead of the Padres in both 87 and 88, when the losing scheme took place. Clearly, it was time to change the karma. Some unknown force, this guy says, some unknown force led me to a local bookstore where I happened upon a book on the occult, full of spells, incantations, and the like. And it continues to go on to admit that that's exactly what they were doing was casting a spell. Now, I want to show you one of the most intense forms of sigil magic. And once again, this is something that Every one of you, at least in America, have definitely seen, because most of you at one point in your life or another have actually had money, right? Well, what is money? What's American money? Why are there so many symbols on this money? Why are there so many strange images and hidden meanings? It's because money is sigil magic. They took paper, they put their spells on it, they put their plans on it right in front of your face, and they called it money. One of the best breakdowns I've seen on American money being sigil magic is from Jonathan Kleck. He shows clearly on this money past attacks, like the OKC bombings, 9-11, and most intriguing, he shows us some future attacks, things that are coming, at least as far as the money is concerned, right? So the events that haven't happened just yet have to do with the Hoover Dam in America, and with tsunami waves wiping out New York City from a nuclear explosion. So here's just a few examples of some of Jonathan's work on money, the sigil magic of money.
So as I was saying earlier, the signs are all around us. We've been seeing this for a few years, and we're seeing more and more of it as the years wear on. This is a pagan priest that gave the final prayer at the Paralympic ceremony a few years ago. And of course, not long ago, we had this bizarro light show on the Empire State Building in New York City. We also had the 26-foot-tall Anubis statue installed at the Denver International Airport, or the New World Airport. And that wasn't the only Anubis statue. More of those big Anubis statues have been placed all around the world. And the reason I wanted to show you that is because of this story right here. The Temple of Baal coming to New York will be followed by hundreds more all over the world. This story right here is huge, especially for people like us that have the eyes to see this stuff and to understand what's taking place. This really is the manifestation, the physical manifestation of the Luciferian age all over this planet, right before our very eyes. Now I covered this subject in a video a while back and it's how ISIS is destroying all these ancient relics. And of course ISIS was blamed for destroying this right here, it's the Temple of Baal that was in Palmyra, Syria. So now the news comes out that they're going to be erecting a brand new one in New York City and in London next month. And that's not it, there's going to be many more. It turns out that there are plans to put arches in hundreds more cities all across the globe. The organization behind this is the Institute of Digital Archaeology, which is a joint venture between Harvard University, the University of Oxford, and Dubai's Museum of the Future. The initial arches from the Temple of Baal that will be erected in New York and London as part of UNESCO's World Heritage Week in April are intended as a gesture of defiance, they say. But ultimately, the plan is to share this cultural treasure with as many cities around the planet as possible. So we all know ISIS is a construct, and in my video I was explaining how I believe they're being used to destroy all this old archaeology. And now this story comes out, we see why. This is at least one of the reasons why. This gives them an excuse. So now we're going to go ahead and build like hundreds of these arches and put them all around cities all around the globe. Now that'll show ISIS. Meanwhile, do you even know what the Temple of Baal stood for? From the Bible in Jeremiah, it says, They have built also the high places of Baal, to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. People danced around the Asherah pole, which was nothing more than a phallic symbol. It's quite possible that these poles function somewhat like the poles in what we now see in strip clubs. The people also acted out lustful, licentious body scenes for the enjoyment of everybody who was watching. They had all the different kinds of sexual experiences on public display, including men with women, men with men, and all other combinations in between. So there you have it, folks. That's why I wanted to show you. I think you can see from this video alone the manifestation of this stuff, and how it's manifesting a lot quicker now. But the battle is on. The spiritual battle is taking place right now. The enemy and the people that follow the enemy are rising, and they're fighting. They're really fighting. This is a time of decision for us all. Which side are you on? Thanks for checking out the video. Take care out there, folks, and I'll talk to you real soon.